Moving on to the TCA cycle. And remember the TCA cycle is all about making dehydrogenases. We're gonna be making NADH and FADH2. That's just to make sure when we get to the electron transport chain, we have a ton of dehydrogenases to do what we need to do, okay? So let's start where we left off, acetyl-CoA. That was our last product of glycolysis, remember? So acetyl-CoA combines with oxaloacetate to make citrate. And the enzyme that does that is citrate synthase. The name gives it away. Citrate makes isocitrate via isocitrate dehydrogenase. And this is important because this is the rate limiting step. Isocitrate goes to alpha ketoglutarate. I'll just write it as alpha kg. That gets worked on by alpha kg dehydrogenase to make succinyl-CoA. Succinyl-CoA gets worked on by succinate thionase to create succinate. That turns into fumarate via succinate dehydrogenase. That turns into malate via malate dehydrogenase. And then finally you get back to oxaloacetate and that is the loop. That sounds like a lot, but there's a trusty mnemonic that I found. I like it a lot. It's called citrate is a starting substrate for making oxaloacetate. So citrate is a starting substrate for making oxaloacetate. That is the big picture. That is just the products and the enzymes. And you know after we get the big picture, we get the nitty gritty facts. So, here's the nitty gritty facts. All these dehydrogenase enzymes are gonna make what we want. So, malate dehydrogenase isocitrate dehydrogenase and alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase are gonna give us our NADH. Succinate dehydrogenase and succinate thionase, anything that ends in succinate, they're a little bit different. They're a little bit more unique. Succinate dehydrogenase is actually part of the ETC cycle and it makes FADH2. It's the only one that does that, important. Remember that. Succinate thionase makes GTP. Okay, so know all the enzymes, know which one's the rate limiting step, know that all the dehydrogenases make what we need to make, but anything that ends or starts with sus is going to be a little bit unique. So succinate thionase makes JDP or GDP. Succinate 
dehydrogenase makes FADH2. All right. One last thing you got to remember, alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase uses a complex. Remember we talked about pyruvate dehydrogenase has that complex and I told you to remember it because we'd be seeing it again. Well, this uses the exact same complex. Do you remember what that complex was made out of? It's going to be your B vitamins, right? I'll even draw the same drawing that it has no bearing because it doesn't look like that. These are your B1 vitamin, thiamine, pyrophosphate, B2, which is going to be your riboflavin, B3, which is your NAD niacin, B5, pentothenic CoA, and then lastly, your lipoic acid. Good. So I seen a question that just says, which one of these need five mean? And I was like, well, hey, what are you talking about? Well, thiamine is part of this giant complex which makes up alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase. So alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase needs thiamine just by nature of its design. That's the TCA cycle. Hope it wasn't so bad. Remember this mnemonic. Remember what the purpose, purpose of it is and that is to make these for our ETC cycle, which we'll talk about in the next video.